Hi, this is Heidi with the Essex Retorter here at the Darkroom Gallery. And we are interviewing Infinite Cole Clasher, who is running as an independent for the Chittenden Central Senate seat, along with Tanya Vyofsky, Martin Gulick, and Phil Baruth, who has declined our invitation for an interview. Um, I don't know much about you other than I remember you ran for mayor of Burlington a few years back. Well, uh, thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> that was, uh, um, that was quite a race. We, we, uh, we had our first and only child the week before the election. Um, so there was a lot going on there now and now and, and so now I'm a father. Uh, I wasn't then. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, he's healthy. He's, um, he's awesome. He's wearing me out. Um, and so I'm trying to be a father first. Um, but as far as uh, trying and, and um, I would say interviewing for this new job as a state senator representing Chittenden County. Like it feels like I'm, I'm interviewing for a new job and it, except I have to pay money to get this job, right? I have to run ads, I have to uh, print out, you know, lawn signs. And, but I will say that what makes this campaign for me a lot different than the mayoral campaign is it feels less political um, somehow, um, I have a, a master's degree in urban policy analysis from the New School University, and so I, I do have this actually formal training around policy, and I think what a lot of people don't know is uh, for the past almost decade, a lot of my work has been in community organizing around education issues. But there has also been a significant amount of my work um, as a policy advocate in Montpelier for Voices for Vermont's Children, um, who I've been with for nine and a half years. And so we're basically uh, what they call white hat lobbyists for children and families. And, and the Can you explain white hat lobbyists? Yes. The, the I've white, never heard that term. <laughs> yeah, the white hat lobbyist means that we're, we're, I mean, we're just not big lobbyists, right? We're, we, we're, we're a nonprofit, uh, 501c3. We, um, we have a six person shop. Um, maybe actually, I think we're down to five. Uh, we've been around, uh, Voices for Vermont's Children has been around for about 35 years now. And it started out, um, you know, with, uh, as an anti poverty, you know, kind of uh, organization. Um, and so we've kind of been on this track of, you know, trying to um, advocate for policies for uh, families in Vermont, um, whether it's access to um, oral hygiene, um, you know, health, um, or as early, early childhood, you know. Um, we do a lot of advocacy for reach up, a reach up program, which, you know, some people may or may not be familiar with, but it's a anti-poverty program, you know, that um, what we've been doing for years is advocating for more uh, money for families um, so that they're not like li living below the, the poverty level. It, it doesn't take long for me, um, you know, to understand uh, the difference between, you know, a policy that looks good on the surface, um, but, you know, when it leaves, you know, uh, when, it, when it passes, you know, the implementation process of it you know, may not get us where we want to be, right? Because I can tell you from the perspective of uh, someone who's advocated for policies um, and committees, I've seen bills go from the House um, as just plain templates, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, issues that people are doing, you know, around the country, and then it goes to the Senate, um, and then it all of a sudden has all these new additions to it um, without any rigorous like public comment or um, discussion you know about it so 
this is kind of a, a black box, and, and I get that, you know, uh, legislators, it's the job of the legislators to do a lot of that work for us. And I also think there's a lot of local knowledge that should be informing some of the ways that, you know, our legislation is moving through the legislative process. Uh, what made you decide to run as an independent? I'm, I'm the tortoise in this race, right? Um, mostly because I'm running as an independent and I don't have a, the party apparatus behind me. And, you know, I would have to say the choices are slim, right? You know, um, I, I don't know the folks in the Republican Party very well. The, the direction uh, that the Democratic Party has, has gone in here isn't bold enough for me, right? Um, and, and when I say bold enough, I, I, can, I guess I'll try to give you an example. Um, if you look at the governor's vetoes, you know, this past session, um, all of you know, the actions that he took, the vetoes that he took, you know, some major vetoes, in my opinion, one of them was he vetoed the uh, 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 just cause eviction. Uh, uh, bill that came out of Burlington, actually. It came out of the city of, of Burlington. And there's this tension here around um, housing as a human right, like everybody deserves a, a roof over their head. Like, I think most people believe that, but there's a tension between that and the, the rights of property owners to be able to rent out their property and say what happens with that property, um, you know, who comes and goes, when they go. And so there, there's that tension there that I think the Democratic Party is solidly on the side, has demonstrated to me that they are solidly on the side of people who own property and, and should be able to decide what to do with their property. They haven't demonstrated, you know, I mean, they've, they paid a lot of lip service to it. And, you know, we have these uh, shelters being created in a parking lot, you know, online, you know, for, to address the, like, people who are visibly in the street, you know, homeless. But we know that the homelessness um, is much broader than what we can actually, it's worse than what we can actually see, right? You know, we, yeah. there, there are folks, you know, who are moving around, you know, there are folks who are just a paycheck away. Exactly. You know, um, so, I th Couch surfing. That's right. That's right. And so, to the, you know, to the, I can't put. We can't put all this on 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 the governor. Back to the, the the Democratic Party, by and large, did not overturn that veto, <laughs> right? So we don't have the numbers to overturn that veto, and it's partly because of where um, the Democratic Party is, you know, as a state. And, and certainly as a city, I think, you know, in Burlington, um, where we, it's majority renters in, in Burlington. The city is majority renters. Um, and your district also includes Winooski. That's right. has that's a right. lot of renters. Thank you. Thank you. Um, majority renters. Majority renters. Essex, we're getting there with building so much rental housing as opposed to single family stuff. With the Progressive Party, you know, um, there are some folks there who, who I love dearly. Um, I, I, again, th there are some limitations, um, I think, and some, some things that you give up um, when you, you, know, you run as a, as a P, with a P, you know, as a, as a, as a progressive, you know, because there are some things that I, I, I think I probably agree with some Republicans on, you know. Such pending. as? Such as, um, I, I'm not sure about the hyper focus on reforming the police, right? It's, there is a lot of work to be done there. And I think there are other, there are other ways to address public safety that I think um, may not have anything much, very much to do with the police. Um, I, I think maybe I might agree with some Republicans about, or, or have some, maybe the same questions that some Republicans- or Some conservative viewpoints. Right, around where our, um, how our gun laws are doing so far, 
for us, right? Not Care to we, elaborate? Yeah, yeah. We, we have passed um, a lot of gun reform laws, I think for Vermont, especially, you know, being a, a, a carrying state, you know, a gun, yeah. gun-loving state. But I'm not clear how we're doing, you know, if that has actually decreased gun violence, right? If that has, if that, if those, passing those laws have actually had the impact that we were hoping that they would have, right? And so that, I'm, those are questions that I have. I think our, our public schools need to claim some responsibility in where our kids go when they leave our public schools. You know, I worked with a, a group of fifth grade boys who ran the gamut from the kid who knows what college they're going to because their parents are at the university to the kid who is failing every single standardized test because, you know, he doesn't, no one at, at home speaks English. Um, he's, in, he's in a big family. He probably doesn't, he's not getting a whole lot of sleep. And once you fall behind, it's so hard, especially with reading. We're in a crisis, a literacy crisis. Half of our K through 12 public school students are not reading at grade level. Half. Half. And then when you break it down and you look at the kids of color, of course, we're doing worse. For us, it's 30 percent. You know, black kids, 30 percent. Kids with disabilities, 30, 30 something percent. You know, when you start like pulling out the, the, the groups. So that basic skill, being able not just to read, but to comprehend what you're reading, where you, you know, apply it and, you know, um, know the difference between fake news and, and, and real news. Proposition five, the reproductive rights. Mm. Um, where are you on that spectrum? <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, I am all the way on the, you know, supporting, you know, women's reproductive rights and 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 uh, finding to the resources to support quality reproductive health, you know. Um, I'm 49, I just had my first child four and a half years ago. Um, if me and my partner, partners, and you know, f f you know, people I had relationships with had not had uh, access to, you know, uh, repro reproductive health, you know, AKA abortions, I would be a mess. I would be, we would be a mess. I see that issue very much connected to, you know, the the end slavery issue, um, in that, you know, this country has had this, you know, this long history of having control over people's bodies, um, you know, for the for the sake of profit, you know, and you can call it, you know, capitalism. You can call it whatever you want. But you know, there was this one book that really made it clear for me. Um, this book called it was actually it was called uh, White Trash by, by Nancy Eisenberg, and it's like the untold story of class in America. And she opens up by talking about how, you know, women when women came here, there were there were less of them. First of all, it was mostly men, and so women were were seen as you know to to breed you know that was their job you know and and the and the product were they, they were put to work you know i mean we just put child law labors into play not too long ago you know in the big scheme of things so we we, we have this history of controlling people's bodies and um i think you know, we're seeing right now with the Supreme Court, you know, decision taking backsliding and, and, and falling back into this, you know, this old history of, you know, and if we're going to be able to hold on to the status quo, then we need to be able to have control over this, over them, and over this over here. That's, that's how I, I look at that. Um, is there anything I haven't asked you that you would like the voters to know? I am the tortoise in this race, you know, and, it, and it's 
not because of you know my lack of experience it's not because of you know um, I don't really want this job it's because I'm not connected to a, a political apparatus and you know it's it's, it's hard to know how much of my own time and money to invest in a campaign. It, it would be great to, you know, um, if, if people wanted to support uh, financially, you know, you, you can find me. I have a website up finally. Uh, it's uh, voteinfinite.com. You know, if you can spare 10, 20 dollars or whatever you can contribute, that would go towards me raising my visibility and hopefully uh, serving in the Vermont State Senate representing Chittenden County. Thank you, Infinite. Yeah, thank you, Appreciate Heidi. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me here. This is Heidi with the Essex Retorter, talking with Infinite Cole Clasher, um, running for State Senate from Chittenden Central.